Martin Heidegger gilt als einer der größten Denker des 20. Jahrhunderts. Und dies macht uns in Mestgeld natürlich stolz. Stolz, dass so eine Größe aus unserer Mitte entstanden ist. Ich möchte gerne den Anlass des 30. Todestages von Martin Heidegger benutzen, um über sein Denken aus der Erfahrung seiner Heimat zu sprechen. Zwei kleine, aber eindrucksvolle Texte, die ganz zu Westkirch gehören, haben mich immer schon beeindruckt, nämlich der Feldweg und vom Geheimnis des Glockenturms und nun auch zum Titel verholfen. Man hat nämlich von verschiedener Seite immer wieder versucht, Martin Heidegger als einen Provinzdenker hinzustellen, der im Grunde nichts anderes als ein Heimatphilosoph im abschätzigen Sinne ist, der die Metaphysik verbauere und im Grunde über die Sprache von Westkirch so ein Titel eines Aufsatzes nicht hinauskommt. Ich habe nie einen Lehrer an der Universität erlebt, der mehr für mich da gewesen wäre als Heidegger. We had to live with the fact that he was the first Nazi rector uh, in 1933 of a renowned university like, uh, like Freiburg. Aber als Lehrer war er hervorragend. Ein, ein, ein Handwerker. Jemand, der den Studenten arbeiten ließ. Sehr grob, aber wirklich uh, solide. He went around like a, uh, a, a cowboy from the Black Forest. Uh, bei einem Schwerstunfall war er der einzige meiner Lehrer, der mich im Krankenhaus besucht hat. Das uh, sind Dinge, die prägen, die man nicht vergisst, aber... There were heavy controversies, also some Heidegger, the Nazi, and he had never been a philosopher. He is just a, a, a simple boy from the black forest expressing himself in a language nobody understands. And the other is, uh, people said he is... Uh, the most famous German philosopher. There are a whole series of, of incidents in Heidegger's biography which are questionable, very questionable, revolting, or even disgusting. Some people have pointed out that the, the plan for Heidegger's collected works is intended to run to 80 volumes or so, and then pointed out in the same breath with horror and among these 80 volumes, there's not one word devoted uh, to the greatest catastrophe of the 20th century, namely Auschwitz. In terms of openness, or I think Heidegger is basically pretty honest. One Catholic philosopher studying with Heidegger made, uh, Max Müller was his name, uh, Heidegger simply did not have any civil courage absolutely lacking in civil courage. The little town of Meskirch in Baden, in the southwest part of Germany, is a few kilometers from the upper Danube Valley on the edge of the Black Forest. This is staunchly Catholic country. Catholicism, which is the dominant religion in the German province of Baden, where Heidegger grows up, is characterized by a series of cultural uh, prejudices. Foremost among those cultural prejudices, one might say, is an antipathy toward the values of modernity. Heidegger's Catholicism didn't lead him by any means directly to Nazism. And as we know, Heidegger actually broke with his Catholicism in uh, around 1911 in order to pursue philosophical studies. When also Heideggers Weg war ja der Weg eines äh, einfachen Menschen aus katholischem Milieu, der auch hochbegabt gewesen ist, ein Weg hin zum Priestertum. Er sollte katholischer Priester werden. Und das war für ihn auch ganz eindeutig. Es concerns um, Heideggers relation to religion, it's clear that it's one of the deepest uh, sources of his thoughts. Uh, Heidegger was deeply attracted to a highly a conservative form of Catholicism. He was personally attracted uh, to uh, figures from church history who were extremely conservative. 
Abraham of Santa Clara. Abraham of Santa Clara was born in 1644 in Crayen Heinstetten, a small village not far from Meskirch. He was an Augustinian monk who became the most important Catholic preacher in Germany during the Baroque era. But his great popularity at the time came from his fanatical preaching style. His oratory was filled with vitriolic diatribes against the Jews. Historians have generally acknowledged that anti-Semitic currents in Austria and southern Germany hark back to Abraham a Santa Clara. Uh, I think that Heidegger never was able to come to grips with his Catholicism. It's not surprising that uh, at the end that he was buried in consecrated ground. He wanted to go back to where he came from. It's not just the Ort Messkirch and the Friedhof Messkirch, where his forefathers were buried, but also the whole ambiente, the flair of this landscape, and the mentality of these people, the belief of these people, all that had him his life long begleitet und nicht losgelassen. Und dorthin ist auch das, was er über den Feldweg geschrieben hat, eingebettet. Der Feldweg, das ist etwas, was ein Weg ist, die, das, der dadurch das ganze Leben gegangen ist. Rainer Martin studied under Heidegger and for 15 years was his assistant at Freiburg University. Heimat kann vermutlich etwas Schönes sein, wenn es nicht nur alpenmäßig gejodelt ist und gespielt, sondern wenn man eine feste Herkunft hat. Wie schön war, jedenfalls wenn wir nicht selber arbeiten müssen, die Bauernkultur. Das sind die Dörfer mit ihren Kirchen, Es sieht alles so schön aus. Und Heidegger hat den Abschied von der Bauernkultur nie geschafft, das Ende der Bauernkultur nie verwunden. Here in the little house on the far left, Martin Heidegger was born on September 26, 1889. His parents came from humble circumstances. His father, Friedrich, was a sextant at St. Martin's Church. His mother, Johanna, came from a small village nearby, and just across the square from St. Martin's in the middle house is where Martin grew up and attended Mass every Sunday. Walking the few meters from his house to the church, where he served as an altar boy and rang the church bells. Martin attended the local Meskir schools until 1903, when he entered at the age of 14 the gymnasium in Constance on a Catholic scholarship. The headmaster of the boarding school in Constance was Dr. Konrad Gruber, who also came from Meskirch and who years later would become Archbishop of the Freiburg Diocese. Dr. Gruber took young Martin under his wing and in 1907 gave him a copy of Franz Brentano's dissertation on the manifold meaning of being, according to Aristotle. In 1909, Heidegger attended the Jesuit seminary in Thesis near Feldkirch, Austria. He was there less than two weeks when he had his first major crisis. He joins the Jesuits, and in that first 10-day trial period, <coughs> he has a, a, what they call a nervous heart condition on a hike. In other words, he has a kind of a psychosomatic heart attack or panic attack. In, I think of it as a kind of an identity crisis where he recognizes on some level that he doesn't want to commit his life to def using his intellect to defend the Catholic Church. He later describes that as, they're calling for me to take out my brain and fill my head with spaghetti. In 
In 1911, the Archdiocese of Freiburg declares he is not fit for the priesthood. He finally breaks with the religion of his youth. In 1914, Heidegger was called to military service, but was released because of his physical health. In 1915, he was called again to the service and was assigned to the post office censoring mail. In August 1918, he was assigned to the Western Front and duty in the weather service. But he never saw combat. Heidegger was this guy who wanted to be a hero. He, he admired Ernst Jünger, right? Jünger's storm of steel is this description of how men achieve authentic greatness, heroic greatness, by confronting death together. Heidegger believed that Jünger had described the truth of the of this life on the front lines. You know, Thomas Sheehan quotes that Heidegger at one point on his CV added falsely that he'd uh, fought in the trenches at Verdun.